Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this is part two in a little mini series that I am doing. Uh, if you've not watched part one, please go and watch part one first because it shows you how I prep. <coughs> oh gosh, pardon me. It shows how I prep and prepare my natural nail ready for uh, acrylic overlay application. Um, so what you are going to need obviously is the hand that you are going to be applying your acrylic to. You are going to want your acrylic brush, um, some kitchen roll or kitchen towel to wipe your brush off. You are going to need your monomer and your polymer, your acrylic powder. Um, as I said, the, these of this hand has already been prepped and prepared, ready for gel application. So the first thing we are going to talk about are zones. So basically when I'm applying acrylic, when it's either to myself or to a client, I work in zones. And there are three zones, zone one, zone two, and zone three. And that is the order in which you apply the acrylic. Some other people may call it the three bead method. So zone one is always um, generally um, just below where like your fingertip like sort of around here and down is zone one then between here and like by here is zone two and then this top part here is zone three so you apply on zone one first then zone two then zone three as you can see my nail with my tip on is quite flat and you are going to want to make sure you have your apex going across zone two because that is where the pressure point is on the nail so you'll want a nice curve going from thin to thick sort of going up in a nice smooth curve and then back down to thin and it makes a nice smooth curve like this now when it comes to your liquid uh, and your powder ratio uh, the way I do it is I work in small, medium and large beads. So we're going to get my brush wet. Now for a large bead, I will just wipe the brush off once and I will dip it in my powder three times. So one, two, three. And then you wait for it to polymerize. And that's when it goes from B and bumpy to all nice and smooth. And then you can apply that like so. And that is a large bead. Now for a medium, we wet our brush again. And this time, instead of wiping once, we wipe twice. And instead of dipping one, three times, we dip twice again. So two and two. So one two you wait for it to polymerize and then it is ready to go onto the nail and then for a small bead you get your brush nice and wet and you scrape three times so one two three and you dip it just once Now on that paper towel, uh, if I bring it up closer, you can see that the beads are smaller because this one here, if I turn it sideways, you can see how thick it is. And then the medium and then the small. So these are the size of your beads. And this is what I do. So, but you have to make sure that your brush isn't too wet. So if I have my brush dripping wet, and I pick up some powder like that and it's falling in straight in my powder yeah it's too wet if you don't have enough uh, liquid on your brush you're going to pick up the powder and it's not going to polymerize so you can see all the dusty bits there on the brush and see how it's just not polymerizing that is because it is too dry so I'm just going to top up my powder and get some new uh, cloth and I will be back 
So when you get your acrylic brush, the first time you put it in the powder, you want to put it in and push down gently and you'll see some bubbles come out of your brush. You want to turn it over, press down again, turn it over, press down again, and you want to keep doing that until all the bubbles are out of your brush. So, as we said, working from zone uh, 1, 2 and 3, starting off on zone 1, we are going to pick up our acrylic. Now I do have little bits of lumps in here from where I was showing you, but ah oh well. Now we are going to place it on zone one, which is about here. Damp off your brush and move and pat it into place. Making sure you are wiping your brush off because acrylic likes to stick to acrylic. I'm going to get that corner bit. There we go. So we've got zone one on. Now we are going to go in for zone two, which is going to be a medium bead. So we scoop twice and we dip twice. Wait for that to polymerize where it goes from bumpy to nice and smooth. And then we are going to put it in zone two and do the exact same thing. Making sure you are guiding the acrylic where you want it to go. Cleaning up the sides of the nail as you go. Like so. And now we are going to go in to zone three. So we're going to swipe three times and we're just going to dunk once. For a small bead, wait for it to polymerize. Now, here you want to place it just a tiny bit lower from the cuticle and then pat it into place where you want it to go. Taking your time, there's no rush. And putting it, clean up the sides as you go. Now I have only just passed my nail tech qualification. Um, so I've still got a lot of learning to do and a lot more experience. I am just showing you how I do it. And please remember, as I have said, I am doing this khaki handed because yeah, I am right handed. So there we go. Yes, it's a bit thick, um, but we now have to wait for that to dry before we can get to filing. So I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit lower and I'm going to show you a second time.
like so. My camera wants to focus, there we go. And you can see before filing, we're starting to get that nice curve up to the apex. And then with the filing, we're gonna be smoothing out, but concentrating more down by here. So it goes in a nice curve down. So I'm just going to do that for all of them and I will be back guys. Hello guys, so I am back. Um, don't worry about the dustiness, I've just filed um, these four fingers here. Um, and if I turn them to the side, uh, you can see how it goes from thin and it goes up with the apex and then back down with a nice curve. And this was just done using a hand file and I'm going to show you the next step on how I actually file. So this one hasn't been done. As you can see, it's all lumpy and bumpy and not smooth. So what I do, first things first, get the dust off of there. Before I do anything, I like to go in with a half moon file because of this curve here. And then using the smooth side, I go around the cuticle first. So because it's curved you can go like this nice around the side of the cuticle so I do this you want to have it at a slight angle because you don't want to be taking too much off of the apex by here so I just go around the cuticle area And then once I've done that, going in with the harder grit file and pull the sides down like this. So any that's acrylic that is stuck to the skin, you can get off and you can get the nail file under on the rough side. And I put it under and I just start getting the sides to where I like them. And as you can see, I don't do it straight like this at first. I do it from going from underneath. And then I bring it up to do the sides. So start at the bottom and slowly work it up to the side like that. And then do the same on the opposite side. Underneath first, then bring up the sides underneath, bring it up to the side. Then we do the free edge. By the way, if you wanted to know all the different parts of the nail and fingertip, I am happy to draw a diagram and give you all of the names for it. If that is something you would be interested in, let me know. And then when you've got the free edge how you like it, I like to go underneath the whole thing like this and just do the underside of the nail. Round the corners off. And then going back in with the smooth side, remember not to take too much off of the apex. We're just going to smooth that top bit down. making our way down the nail. Now, as you can see, when I'm filing, I'm moving like this across the nail. You don't want to stay in one place and just file. When the heat will build up and you can end up burning yourself or the client, or you can take too much down in one spot 
um, and then it's going to take a while, a long while, to fix it. Now, when you are filing the nail, you want to keep looking from the side of the nail like this to make sure that you are getting a nice smooth curve. Now, if my camera wants to focus, you can see that it's not quite so smooth. Smooth is a little bit of a point by here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to smooth that down. So we end up with a nice curve. Taking not too much down. But you can see we've got a much nicer curve. And we are just going to file the bottom part of the nail, smooth it out and as well as looking from the side of the nail like this that you've got the curve going nice, um, you can turn the nail this way and look at it like that so you can see on this side of, oh, on this side of the nail here it smooths down nice and smooth and then this side is a lot more bulky so I'm going to be concentrating on this side here to get this bit nice and smooth now we are a bit dusty but if I turn this up and my camera wants to focus right, so as you can see there we've got it filed around the cuticle it's nice we've done the free edge and we have done the sides and you can see we have that nice curve where it goes from thin up to thick by the apex then back down to thin at the tip and if we turn the nail this way it is looking quite equal so now we are going to want to get rid of all this dust Now I'm just using isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of all the dust and to clean up the nails. Now we've cleaned off the dust. You can then go now go in. Oh, I've got a bit of that thing there. You can now go in and decorate uh, your nails and make them more pretty, or you can just put a top coat on them uh, to seal them up. And then you are going to want to go in with some cuticle oil um, just to rehydrate and look after them cuticles if you happen to have cuticle oil um, if you are someone that often get your hands wet um, you know because of washing dishes and cleaning and all that kind of stuff I would suggest you put cuticle oil on every day not every time you wash your hands but once a day just to keep looking after them cuticles And here is the finished nails and this is how I apply acrylic and this was doing my offhand and I think they actually came out really really good for my offhand please let me know if you found this video useful or not and the last step in this series will be me uh, in a couple of weeks because I have to wait for these to grow out showing you how I do a fill in um, and then the fourth one after that will be me showing you how I remove acrylics. So if you want to see the rest of the videos in the series, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you all in the next video, guys.